so the extent that you're similar to Groupon, a lot of people criticize the Groupon model for yep. being, um, you know, it's of course a big area of debate, and they're in there. I guess they're still in their quiet period, and they're going to go public sometime. So I think someone yeah. wasn't quiet recently, yeah. but I think generally they're in the quiet. They period. did an amendment, I think, for that or yeah. whatever in there. one, but um, so I think you know, um, a big area of debate is sort of how sustainable, how defensible these businesses are. Yeah. Right. Like Bill Gurley, I don't know if you saw that post. He had a really good post that was like. The ten, the 10x club or something. It was how to build a moat around your business or something like this, and what he looks for. And interesting, I don't think I saw it. Yeah, it's, it's great. If you, I highly recommend it. But um, but if you look at that list, it's sort of like you know, you can have network effects, you can have you know, uh, I don't know, you had a whole bunch of things, and then uh, you can have you know, loyal customers. You yeah. can have I don't know, there's things that give your business defensibility or technology advantage or some other, something else. And um, the you know, sort of Groupon didn't have really kind of any of those and. I think, like, if you talk to a lot of like the hedge fund people looking at that yep. stock, they worry that their um, that their customer acquisition costs are going up as they as like they're in this battle with Living Social, yep. et cetera, Right? They're just bidding up the for customer sure. acquisition yep. costs. They're also Wild bidding on the other side, bidding up the merchant acquisition costs. Yep. You know, uh, I just a friend of mine said they were talking to a bar owner the other day who said he gets six calls a day from deal sites. Right? Oh. So like, you know, so is this That's dark? Right? Yeah. I mean, which means you have to hire more salespeople. I don't know. So the the costs go up. Um, you know how 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 do businesses like this create sustainable sustainable assets? Or, well, or, I mean, I think Groupon real has value? a few things that are defensible. Um, first and foremost is the, I mean the, the local sales team that they have is not something that everybody can get their hands on. I mean, even Google was coveting that local sales force. So you think I, that I think, was one of the main reasons they wanted them. I do absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that local sales force is something not to be sort of uh, underestimated. Um, I also think Groupon has a. a a widely recognizable consumer brand now. And while it's easier to build a brand today than it was 10 years ago because of social media and because sort of news travels faster these days, uh, that's not, that's that's real. Yeah. And that's a real asset. And, you know, uh, when Groupon calls a local business versus daily deal site X, I think Groupon gets a different kind of uh, response. And, and I think you see that by the fact that they're able to get the number of deals that they have. Um, I agree, though, that there is some element of this land grab and how do you sustain it over time. And I do think that the sorts of deals that they're doing, there's going to be uh, the margins are going to get compressed. And like, I'm not particularly uh, long Groupon per se um, because of that for the way that we approach local. And I don't look at local as something that if we did as a standalone business, uh, something that I would be all that excited about. The reason I think we're a really good fit to have some local commerce is because we already have the consumers in place. Those guys are in those markets, so we don't have to go out and spend to grow for our rewards product. Those people are already coming in through our Thrillist product. Yeah. And so we already have that <laughs> channel, and we already have scale in the markets that we're going into. I'm not launching rewards in cities that we don't have Thrillist in. Mm -hmm. um, one. Two, local merchants already know Thrillist. We've been in these markets for years covering uh, their businesses editorially, sending them customers. We have a very good relationship with the local businesses that we've covered before. And so when we call, it's not daily deal site X calling and saying, give me margin, give me margin, give me margin. But we're calling them and giving them. So you uh, ha having featured them at some point Presumably in your editorial or not content. featured them, but they wanted to be featured and for whatever reason. So you're seen as a marketing ally as opposed to. Absolutely. And you're not, and you're not pitching it on uh, discounts. So we're, try, we're really trying not to. There are businesses who want the discount hook, and we do find that sometimes if you're able to offer a great deal, you see really good performance. Because another big question around the sort of the daily deal model is... Um, the world's it, not always on sale. Well, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, one is like, right. is, it, is it on sale partly because we're in a, you know, recession in yeah. area environment with people of excess inventory or whatever. And then, um, but also, I think a lot of these local businesses aren't, you know, they aren't, they don't have advanced... Um, computer systems for analyzing lifetime customer value, at least I think a lot of them don't. Most and, of them do not. That's and, a big market. Yeah, and so they don't really know. I think a lot of people don't even know if this if these are good. Yep. If these are, if these are, if these, getting these customers, are they getting existing customers in um, and just cannibalizing their existing business? Are they actually getting new customers who then come back and don't use Groupon yep. and, and, and pay full price? Um, is this a good sustainable marketing uh, channel? For the, our daily deal is a good sustainable market, marketing channel for, um, for local merchants is, I think, an open question, yeah. right? Or it, it absolutely is. And I think, you know, you go talk to local merchants, and we've done some of it, but I think there's other people who have done a lot more of it. And as you talk to local merchants, um, 
there are a lot of local merchants who are really unhappy with their experience. Um, and I think one of the reasons that Living Social has gotten the, the kind of good buzz that it has is that you generally hear that they provide a better merchant experience. And um, I don't know all the ins and outs of exactly why that is, but I think it's just part it, of it. Is it partly just a discount? They, I think it's just a cultural thing as well. Like the way that they think about their relationships with merchants is a little bit more uh, delicate than Groupon potentially. Um, so when you talk to merchants, you hear kind of a more positive buzz about, about Living we Social. We do. We do about Living Social. Um, that being said, you know, we also have a different demographic. We don't cater to, a, you know, a, a majority female deal seeker. For us, our, we have a higher price point. We have, we're catering to guys. Our deals are much more curated. And so they're not just, it's really not a $10 for $20 of crappy pizza at a pizza place that, like, you really don't want to go to, but... You're hooked on it's like, like a the gun, coupon. It's like guns and beef, uh, right, right, or whatever. Right. Where... Well, yes, I, for f if yes, guns and beef could be a very good selling. This is actually for us. a real place in New Jersey today. <laughs> oh, I know. Trust me, I know. Um, <laughs> that was one of the early Thrillist articles. Well, was it really? Okay. But today we did uh, in San Francisco a experience around. Ooh, it's called Strip in a Strip. Um, we did this in New York. It worked very well. Uh, you can guess what a strip yeah. in a strip is, but at a good steakhouse at one of the gentlemen's clubs we are doing uh, we're offering a strip steak delicious strip steak and a drink and a lap dance and mm. it's ridiculous and it's really and we'll sell a ton of them but it's also it's a really like refreshing experience for a consumer who's getting their group on or their living social and getting this you know yeah. another facial another laser treatment this is something that is different and is editorialized and feels just as much like content as commerce and yeah. that's why we see the engagement that we have with it and we see it growing organically and we see people really like having an affinity for the product mm -hmm. and why we think that we're very different than other people that being said it's we're not in a land grab this is one of three businesses that leverages um, a data set that we think is unique because we understand content consumption and commerce consumption data around a, a user base um, we're very targeted in that we're speaking to a specific kind of consumer and uh, at the end of the day, we're leveraging one shared infrastructure. And so we have some advantages, we think, over a Groupon. Not to say that we anticipate building a company the size of Groupon, but we think that by having multiple revenue streams and multiple businesses within one ecosystem, there are some ways that we can sort of take advantage.